Hi, I'm Janie Kanzler. I'm a Master Gardener with the Jefferson County Master Gardener Association. Uh, we're here in the Sensory Garden at the Louisville Nature Center that's right off of Trevelyan Way and we're on Illinois Avenue right by the zoo. Uh, this is our Sensory Garden and I hope you enjoy the tour. This pond provides the wonderful sense of hearing. The, it's so relaxing and everybody really uh, loves to come by and sit here on the bench and just sit and relax. It's a very relaxing place. And the, actually, the banana trees are offering a little shade. Oh, wow. The leaves have gotten so big <laughs> that it makes a canopy over the bench. So we have a shaded bench because of the banana trees. They're not technically trees, but they are beautiful and we love them. And so how long, uh, are, is this one year's growth? This is one year's growth, yes. No yes. kidding, wow. We actually planted these two years ago and they didn't get quite this tall. And then in the fall, uh, November, late November, early November, we cut them back to the ground and then we put a whole bunch of mulch over the top so that they will overwinter and so far so good. This is our raised bin, vegetable bin. Uh, this year we mixed in some composted cow manure and the tomatoes have gone crazy. Um, so composted cow manure, it was a great thing for us to, to go ahead and add this year. This is our um, lamb's ear and it's the Helen von Stein. It's the kind you want. The other lamb's ear, it's got a bad rap because of it spreading mm -hmm. and going crazy. And right. This one actually does not flower, but it is so soft. The leaves are just like a little lamb's ear. And every time we have a kid's class, or the school kids come over, they always, this is always their first stop. So they can check out the soft lamb's ear and uh, they love that. This is our sea oak. This is the native and as you can see with the wind blowing it's beautiful. Um, they stay on all winter, the seed pods do, and they actually have a pinkish burgundy color to them. So they're really pretty this time of year. But as you can see it does spread so you have to be vigilant on keeping it kind of which we've got, this is a large garden. I figured out it's around 4,000 triangular square feet. So that's a lot. So uh, it's a lot for us to take care of. So we do what we can do. We meet one day a week. And, and, and uh, when you say we, uh, who do you mean? The master gardeners. Okay. And so how many people on your team take care of it? Uh, we normally, now today we actually had nine people come. We worked this morning in the heat. And uh, we usually normally have around six, okay. six people. Sometimes it's two, you know, it just depends. And it's a great group. We couldn't ask for a better group of people. They're all so nice and willing to learn. And, oh, I have to point out our path, our brick path. Mm -hmm. The Master Gardeners actually uh, started this path. We did not do the whole path. That's why I say started. We got quite a bit of it done. We actually had a, a LNC volunteer that also helped and, um, he passed away a few years ago, and we actually have a memorial rock for him over there, and we'll show you that later on. Um, that's one thing I love about this garden. It does have a lot of memorials in it, yeah. and it's really, uh, it's a really nice uh, feeling when you walk in and you know, oh, okay, that's Howard's bench, or that's Reuben's rock, you know, right. so. This is our herb garden, and this is basil and it's lemon basil, and it smells heavenly. We went ahead and let it go to flower because the pollinators love the flowers. And while we're here, I want to point out, see if I can find a right one. These are our ground cherries, and this should be ripe got like a little papery covering. Some people will think it's tomatillas, but they're not. It's a little ground cherry. And they're sweet. They taste, uh, people make jellies and jams out of them. And they taste uh, pretty good. And uh, the critters love them. 
and they actually reseed every year. I planted seeds, started plants about three years ago, and they keep coming back every year, so we don't even have to reseed. This is our garlic chives. Uh, even if you don't like chives to eat, they're a beautiful plant. And look at all the pollinators. Oh my gosh, wow. I mean, they, it's full. There's a little honeybee and all kinds of little wasp. And just, oh gosh, tons of little. Now, I remember you said to me last week that uh, uh, they're measuring the amount of pollinating insects that this garden in particular had some of the most out of any right last year a U of L student came and did a survey and they did it in uh, Jefferson County the entire county and this garden had the most species of butterflies that were found last year in a garden wow in the area so uh so you guys are doing something right that's incredible <laughs> there's two swallowtails now the yellow and then the black one over there so uh and I just, I'm so glad we've got pollinators so you all can get that. That is so neat. Now, now what is this giant, giant plant next to us? This is Joe Pie. And look at all the nice seeds. This morning, I was the first one that got here in the garden. Mm -hmm. And it was the neatest sight. All these goldfinches just came up out of the garden. And because they were eating Joe Pye seeds oh. and Black Eyed Susan seeds and Purple Coneflower seeds, so they were having a feast. But it was so neat because they just kind of, they heard me coming and then they just went up in the air. I have to point out this cute little flower. It's not native, but it is adorable. And some people aren't aware of it. It's an Irish poet tassel flower. Looks like a little tassel. Um, and it is so sweet and it will the seeds will form and they're real fluffy and then they'll uh, come back up too so if you love orange that's a really neat flower to get you'll have to start it from seeds uh, this is our hyacinth bean vine that gets the beautiful little purple flowers wow. and we do everything in this garden organically we don't use any kind of pesticides mm -hmm. or herbicide anything so as you can see, things are eaten on, but that's just part of gardening. I mean, that's, you know, that's the way it, that's the way it goes. And, and so this little trellis, it looks like it's made out of uh, different pieces of wood here. It is. Uh, a Boy Scout, and I'm sorry I don't remember his name, but uh, he was getting his Eagle Scout badge. And he and all uh, the dads and his troop came over and they built this out of the big, huge cedar, nice pieces of cedar. And um, we love it. We've, it turned out wonderful. And there's another one over on the other side of the garden. Wow. But uh, it's beautiful. And look at all the lichen that's forming. It's just gorgeous. That blue-gray color. Um, I don't want to miss this plant over here. This is the Amsonia. Some people know it as Blue Star. It gets beautiful blue flowers in the spring. And this will turn an orangey, a bright orangey yellow color. Uh, as you can see, but it's starting to turn it, now. It, feel, it feels so different than uh, you know, mm -hmm. other plants. Almost right. feels like I'm, I'm petting something. Right, right. <laughs> and this isn't a native, there is a native Amsonia, but this is not the native. I actually like the leaves on this better than the native. The native has a, a different type of leaf, but the same type of flower. But this is a beauty, especially in the fall, great fall color. That's our hose box. We keep all of our hose and our watering can in. You never know what you're gonna find in there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we found baby turtles. No. Found a little mouse. He was the cutest little guy. Uh -oh. Here's some more of our Irish tassel flowers and you can see the little seed seed pods and they blow in the wind and they pop up everywhere but they are so beautiful and our cone flowers now, now these uh these cone flowers uh is this, is this what you mentioned that the goldfinches like yes, to snack on they love these we don't cut them back uh we don't cut back our black eyed susans either because they love those and this cone flower was funny it was uh i bought it and it was called white swan it started out white well, then the next year it became purple, bloomed purple. The next year it bloomed white and purple. <laughs> so
So this year is back to purple, so you never know what color it's going to bloom. <laughs> it's always a surprise. And this is another pollinator heaven. Mountain mint, and there's a honeybee. Uh, it smells like mint. It's a wonderful plant. It is native. Oh, wow. Isn't it wonderful? Mm. And I love the little seed, the little flower on it. It's so unusual. When we start plants, I usually it's try to... better than I think. Any, any other mint I've smelled before. It's so mm -hmm. fresh. I usually <laughs> try to uh, buy seeds that's Ooh, unusual. Nice. Now this I didn't start from seeds. This we got to start of. But I don't know if this isn't a... In the, when a plant is in the mint family, it will have a square stem. Okay. If you can see the four corners mm. there on that stem. So that will tell you that it's in the mint family. And sometimes you can tell by the way it spreads too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and how, when, did, when you started this, I'm sure it was only just a tiny oh, little it was. clump. <laughs> it was, a tiny clump. And believe me, every year we have to cut back. Oh, this is a neat plant. This is the only hardy begonia that there is. It's pink. Yeah, I got that. Thank you. And um, these little flowers will draw dry in the winter, and then when the wind blows, it, it's really neat. And they spread because I brought a clump, small clump of this from my house and uh, my yard, and now we've got all this. So that's great. Love it when they <laughs> grow on and multiply. This is a neat plant. This is the variegated Solomon seal and it does get flowers on it and you can see the little, see these little th bracket-like mm -hmm. things down here? That's where the flowers were dangling off of. Oh, okay. So unless you come along and you kind of look underneath, you would miss them. But um, and there's also a native Solomon seal, which I have some of that to plant in here and I'm going to plant that beside it, but it's not variegated. This is our Judd Viburnum and they have really nice fragrant blossoms. Uh, we started this garden in about 2011 and it was nothing but a weed. Uh, it was a horrible weed patch with wild gra crazy grasses and everything. So we tried to d dig out as much as we could and then we put down thick layers of cardboard and newspapers to um, burn out the um, grasses and weeds. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it took us probably four or five years to really get the weeds under control. Really? We have a problem because the grass over here gets really tall sometimes mm -hmm. before it gets cut. And uh, all the seeds just blow into the garden. Right. And so that means we're going to be weeding, <laughs> digging out a lot, of, a lot of seeds, a lot of weeds. This is our winterberry holly. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm glad they're turning. <laughs> They'll that's be, a lot of berries. That sure is. <laughs> They'll be brilliant red and they will lose, this is a deciduous, which means of course it loses its leaves. So it will be so showy in the winter time with those big bright red berries. Oh, I think I see a passion flower right yes, up there Yes, you sure too. do. You sure do. Isn't it beautiful? Oh. Look, there's a big huge bumblebee on it or two. Oh my goodness. We picked the right day for pollinators. I know. <laughs> They are having fun. That's a perfect shot. Yeah, he flew, I think he was really wanting to be on camera. <laughs> <sighs> We've got one male and four females here, so we made sure we would get berries. You have to have oh. a male. So the, the females are the only ones that do berries. Yes, you see, this is the male. No berries on him. Oh, I see. But so, he has to pollinate the female. Yes, yes. These are really neat. This is a small version. This is a cup plant, and as you can see, look how the leaves grow together, and it forms a cup right here. Wow. And when it rains, or if we happen to water or whatever, then that water sits in there and it gives the pollinators and the birds and the little lizards and frogs a little place to drink. Right. So, and that is a native, wow. and it has a pretty little yellow daisy-like flower on it. So that's a... That's a neat plant. And this is our beautiful Sweet Bay Magnolia. Wow. That, when we first planted this, as you can see on that limb right there, mm -hmm. the deer 
just about destroyed it. <laughs> they came in and I mean it was a small plant. It was sure. probably four feet tall and they came in and they scraped it and they scraped it and they ate it. So we put the fence around it and now we've got the netting around it since it's bigger. But Now it, how, how long ago was that planted? This was planted fall of 2011 or uh, fall of 2011 or spring of 2012. So eight years and it's that high. Yes. My goodness. Yes. It's a beautiful, beautiful tree. Got some shade here. Yes. We're actually going to have a wedding here in September, in the latter part of this month. And here's our passion flower. You saw that over there. Wow. Our fruit. And they call those... Is this the fruit of the passion flower? Yes. Wow. And they call it, when they get ripe, they pop. They call some people call them may pops, which I never knew that. But I was looking stuff up the other day, and some people call them may pops. But it's a beautiful vine, native, gorgeous. Oh, what a nice breeze! This is a Mexican sunflower, and it is a beauty. The pollinators absolutely love it. The hummingbirds love it. Uh, the monarchs love it. And if you feel, it's perfect for a sensory garden because if you feel that stem, it's like velvet. It, it really is. It's mm -hmm. smooth and mm -hmm. silky. And that, so many Isn't individual it, flowers just in that flower head. And some more seeds for the little goldfinches. And, oh, this is a great goldenrod. It's fireworks. Um, it, I love the shape of it. It's like it when it's uh, in bloom. Of course, it's bright yellow, like the native fire, um, sol soledago or uh, goldenrod. But it is just really beautiful. Just the shape. I don't know what that was, but just the shape of it. Um, you know, with the bright yellow, makes a wonderful combination. Sure. This. is our Minarda. And as you can tell, it's in the mint family also. It's got the nice little square stem. And it smells real minty. And it blooms purple and pink. We have both. And we have the red over there on the other side. And those have to be hydrangeas yes, in the back Yes, they are. Those are Annabelle's. We got starts last fall. And so they just start, this was the first year that they bloomed for us. And everything's been so dry. So the garden's looking a little wimpy because of the dryness because we don't come and we only when we're here on Wednesday mornings we'll water mm -hmm. if we feel it's necessary but uh, other than that we don't we have irrigation in our vegetable and our annual raised mm -hmm. beds but um, other than that everything's pretty much on its own so um, that's why you see things drying well and, and what is this giant bush right in front of us? That yeah, is... <laughs> this, as you can see, it is a giant witch hazel. Witch and hazel. Witch hazel. And we should have been pruning on it, but I did not. So, uh, and it's got galls. See this little gall? Uh-huh. And what, and what and is And it gets that? them every year. See, there's a hole there where an insect went in. Oh. And then it forms that little gall. And it doesn't do anything so far. It hasn't hurt the plant. I mean, it's still in that wall. Yeah. That is so neat. Mm -hmm. And so witch hazel in the spring, they have the yellow finger looking flowers? Uh, small, really. Oh. They're not real, real apparent on this one. Gotcha. Um, but um, it's a wonderful plant. And I wanted to... It has a unusual smell. Not real, real fragrant, but... Okay, we have butterfly bushes. And we tried to keep them deadheaded, but as you can see, that doesn't happen all the time. Um, we're very careful what we do with our the seed pods when we um, deadhead them and we make sure we take them home and put them in our yard waste. We have a great big huge pile out here in the back behind the shed 
that we take all of our uh, yard waste, garden waste here, and it gets recycled. MSD comes and picks it up, and then they recycle it and take it to the dump so it doesn't get wasted. Right. Now, the, uh, the purple that I see here, is this also butterfly bush? It is. It sure is. And the uh, pollinators love it. They absolutely <laughs> love it. Oh, and this is a great plant. Oh my gosh. Ironweed. It's ironweed. A, ironweed. It's a native. Look at this bright purple. And it's a gorgeous color. It's the only purple I think we have. <laughs> uh, it's about twice as tall as I am. Yep, it sure is. Now, is this one year's growth? It is. No kidding. No kidding. The only trouble, they do need to be staked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I should have tried. Sometimes you can experiment with plants and cut them back before July 4th, and they will keep on growing, and they'll stay shorter. But I did not try that this year with that, so I'm not sure. This is another Mexican sunflower. It's gotten tall. You see they get really large, um, and the birds love those seeds also. Another butterfly bush. These things smell heavenly. This is the black and blue salvia. That's absolutely gorgeous. The leaves smell incredible. No, I've never smelled the leaf. Mmm. They sure do. Yeah. Nice. And so these, these, I don't think I've ever seen a flower much like this. Right, and the hummingbirds love it. And even they're even pretty when the uh, when the flower goes off because you see it leaves a little black like bracket type th brack time thing. So uh, it's even pretty then. Oh, there's a monarch. You know, I just want to touch everything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> These little blanket flowers are really neat. Uh, I love the colors of them. And you said they were blanket flowers. Blanket flowers. Uh huh. Wow. Just really beautiful colors. And we've got mums. The reason we have mums is you always want to have some mums or some asters in your garden. Um, as you can see, these are going to start blooming in another month or so. And you want that for the pollinators because in another month, all this other stuff's probably going to quit blooming. Right. And so then you have your mums and your. Um, Asters for the pollinators. Look at all the little guys there. They're on the holly flowers. Well, I've never seen anything on those, so that's neat. So what's in this bed? This bed, we actually, every year, we have a great project. We invite the Dreams with Wings uh, folks to come. And uh, that's a wonderful organization that has uh, folks with disabilities. So they come usually in the first part of May. We have to wait till then to make sure the, you know, the annuals can be planted and will safely not freeze. So anyway, uh, they come, we buy the annuals and we help them plant and we have a great time. Oh, there's two little skippers. Here's another skipper, they're so cute. Um, we have a great time with those guys and then we have a little lunch farm so we sit and talk about gardening and just all kinds of fun things so this is always a nice remembrance of them and it's fun to see them come back every year and you know the same a lot of times it's the same people and it helps build community here yes it sure does I'll tell you what this is a lot better than a weed patch <laughs> yes, yes, yes. and it's been so nice because with Dreams with Wings, now our garden club. I'm also the uh, president of the Beachmont Garden Club. And we, last year we went to Dreams with Wings in November and did a project, a Christmas project. Mm -hmm. And this year we're going back in November to do a Thanksgiving project. Oh. So that builds community Absolutely. again with another group. Yeah. Well, this is a weird little creature. I don't know what that is, but. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, something looks, out of Dr. Seuss. Exactly. It's not. The camera's not able to. I know. I'm having trouble focusing yes. on it too. Oh, he's behind the stem now. He is a strange little guy for sure. 
Francis. We, we know he's a bug. He told me he's a true bug. We know that. You just never know what you're going to find. That's what you're going to Look at the sweet ladybug. Now, now, why are ladybugs so important to have in a garden? Well, one thing, they eat aphids. And a lot of your, this is a common milkweed. And a lot of the milkweeds will just get covered with aphids. Mm. And the um, ladybugs larva, they love aphids. So you want ladybugs around. They, they do a great thing for the garden. This tree is a bald cypress. And if you have the room for it, it would be a wonderful tree to add to your yard. It is deciduous. It loses its leaves. It's a cone-producing tree. If you look up at the very top, you'll see oh, its cones. It's got so. some beautiful cones up there. They're kind of a purplish uh, color, but uh, it will lose its leaves. The leaves will turn brown and they'll drop. And it makes a wonderful mulch on oh, there too. True. But people always think, oh, it's done. <laughs> no, it's not. It's right. just supposed to be that. Now, I heard that they're one of the longest lived trees that you can plant. Probably are. Cave Hill has nice ones. Oh, yeah? And they have, theirs have knees. <clears throat> when they're in a more, they can take a lot of moisture. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they'll grow knees when they're in a swampy area. Mm -hmm. This is our native honeysuckle, which is a gorgeous plant. It's another one that the hummingbirds and all the pollinators love. Oh, I'm sure this was made for hummingbirds. Oh, Look yes. at that. Yes. <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't seen hummingbirds today, but they're here. This is another milkweed. This is the swamp milkweed. As you can tell, it doesn't do as well, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, here because it needs more moisture. So, um, but this has got a really pretty pink bloom and really fragrant oh, as well. It's we got so a, common. We got a milkweed bug right over here. Oh yeah. Beauty berry has beautiful purple berries, of course. And this. Oh my gosh. And there is a white form of this also, but the white is not as pretty, I don't think, as the purple. But that's a beautiful shrub. Now, I heard Rosemary tell us that this is a pawpaw. It sure is. And here's some fruit. We have. I don't know what happened. Some animals must have gotten in here because these things were covered in fruit. There's still quite a few. Oh, ooh. I think this one's ripe. Is it soft? Yeah, it's soft. Oh. Oh my goodness. You have to take it with you and try it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, we've got three of those. This is our frog pond that we built. You see a dragonfly there on it. Um, and the skinks love it. The frogs, of course, love it. We'll hear the frogs, but we never get to see them. They always hide on us. And uh, so right now the sedge has really grown up. Do you see that giant spider in the middle? Yes. Oh, I wow. I saw him this morning. Isn't he beautiful? He is. He has a good real estate right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> he is gorgeous. We get those all the time here in the garden. Claim the pond for his own. This was a real chore. We only dug down about a foot, mm -hmm. but this ground was really bad. It was like right. gravelly and really, really in rough shape. So it took us a long time to dig this out. Sure. And one of our other master gardeners dug most of it, so we appreciate all the work you put into it. There. Well, I, I just love this fence here. Yes, yeah, so this is another Eagle Scout, Boy Scout. Anybody listening to this or watching this if you've got young men that are going to try to be an eagle scout it's great they want to they're always looking for projects and they you know they're willing to furnish the supplies a lot of the times and uh, they they're great they come in their dads are with them and they help them out and they do fantastic work so we really appreciate our boy scouts And it, it comes back from seed, as you'll notice, it's popping up pretty much everywhere, but I really, 
I hate to pull them up because the hummingbirds love them, the pollinators love them. So we pretty much just leave them a lot of the sure. time. And we have some, um, some of those are native grasses. I should know the names and I don't apologize for that. But, uh, and this is another patch of our banana trees. And you're telling me that this is one year's growth. One year's growth, look at that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's about 10 degrees colder right here. <laughs> I know. And you know, it, they've grown each year now. They kind of grow out, so there's a little space in there. It makes a perfect spot for kids to go in there, and you know, they're like yeah. sort of grounded yeah, that way. Yeah, right. Wow. A little Japanese anemone in that sweet. That is a big boy. It is. He's beautiful. These, these look sad because they were just planted today. And with it being so hot, we did water them this morning, but they're still looking a little sad, but we're hoping they'll come out of it and be beautiful. This another butterfly bush. We get all the lovely sounds of the hawks. Yeah. You know, and the um, sweet birds. You no, know, it really doesn't look like the swifts are just having a field day today. Yes. I actually, uh, I had never seen a scarlet Oh, you saw one? Yes, he was in this tree. He was beautiful because I saw, I looked up and I saw red and I thought, that's not a cardinal. That's, not, that's too red to be a cardinal. Right, you're right. He was gorgeous. This, now, I wish it were in bloom. This is called, you can't, it's called bear's britches and it had a beautiful pink gray bloom on it and it has really neat like a floweret type of uh, leafing there but this is a gorgeous plant um, it does like shade we need to get it out of there and put it someplace where it can be seen more but we kind of stuck it here just to kind of protect it this garden's open 24 7 so we have to keep that in mind when we do things but most of the time, everything's still here when we come back. Sure. <laughs> well, I want to thank you all so much for watching this and for coming here and looking at our garden with us. It's a sensory garden. We've got taste, scent, sight, smell, hearing, and we just love it. I want to thank everybody for coming today and watching this and visiting with us. It's been a pleasure. Um, we love this garden. It's so wonderful. We get to educate so many people and we ourselves get educated in the long run so it's really a great opportunity so I hope you come and visit the Louisville Nature Center Central Garden on Illinois Avenue thank you